So hi all together. Uh, as already mentioned, my name is Lewis, and I'm very excited to introduce you to the anthropocentric perspective today. So what is anthropocentrism and what is the word made, uh, made up of? Anthropos is Greek for human being and the Greek centro or Latin centrum means center. So as already can deducted from this term, the human being is at the center in this worldview. <clears throat> so anthropocentrism literally means related humans, but in its most important philosophical form, it is the ethical conviction that only humans have intrinsic value. In contrast, all other living beings have value only in their ability to serve humans or in their instrumental value. Anthropocentrism, so, is the belief that value is centered on humans and that all other beings are means to human ends. In comparison to that, uh, a non-anthropocentric perspective instead demands that we consider assigning intrinsic values not only to humans, but also to the entire planet ecosystem and also other non-human species. <clears throat> A distinction can be made between three forms of anthropocentrism. The first one is the ontological anthropocentrism. Um, it's the assumption right here that there is a superior existence of humans in comparison to other non-human species. <clears throat> this ontological reality, for example, is when comparing species and their intelligence or the creation of culture and technology. The ontological anthropocentrism is descriptive rather than normative and so does not necessarily imply human chauvinism of, or the instrumentalization of other species. It is therefore a statement without evaluating it. The next form is the epistemological anthropocentrism and this refers to the fact that uh, we as humans cannot completely avoid um, our own created view of the rest of nature. So we can only evaluate um, living beings since only they or we are sentient, teleological and capable of consciousness or reflections. So we as humans will never go beyond the human perspective. We know the world from our perspective. Um, it's how we evaluate, reflect, and think about and analyze the world. And uh, talking about any ethics or philosophy, there is anthropocentric in the epistemological sense, because you can never know how a specific animal um, or something else uh, is feeling from their point of view. Uh, you only can think what they are feeling from uh, your point of view. <clears throat> So humans here have a necessary reason, but however, there is uh, said nothing about the rank of humans, neither ontological nor epistemological anthropocentrism necessarily implies um, an ethical normative anthropocentrism, which claims to treat humans better, mainly by ascribing intrinsic value to them. So that's where I coming to the last point, the last form of anthropocentrism, the ethical one, and this is the uh, theoretical viewpoint um, that limits intrinsic value only to humans and thus ascribes moral, uh, moral value only to humans. Um, it may have its basics in ontological anthropocentrism as the restriction of moral consideration to humans may sometimes be associated with the ontological view of human centeredness and the privileged position. The normative ethical anthropocentrism becomes a problem because much of nature has been instrumentalized in such a way that the overemphasis of human needs has led to the extensive destruction of nature that we see today. And since normative ethical anthropocentrism should at least save nature for the sake of humanity, there's another component that worsens the destruction of nature. It's the short-sighted uh, collective behavior, for example, unsustainable behavior that includes disregard for potential stakeholders such as non-human species and ecosystems. So here again, you see people, you see the planet, um, 
to see uh, different animals, you see nature, um, but in the, it's the ethical conviction that only the humans have an intrinsic value and all other, other things are only meant to be for humans. So let's talk about the ethical relevance um, of anthropocentrism in business context. So the problem with anthropocentrism is it promotes dualism, hierarchies and the belief that humans are separate from nature. Um, this can cause uh, not caring too much for the environment and other living beings out of selfless motives, but always only as a means to an end. So this can lead uh, to a disconnection of the human from nature and contribute the idea that the biosphere only exists uh, for the consumption for human beings. But at the same time, you can see a trend um, among companies with regard to sustainability, as this is becoming increasingly important to uh, consumers. So in the end, for me, um, the question arises <clears throat> whether the same results can be achieved by an anthropocentric approach as by a non anthropocentric approach. For example, protection of the nature for the preservation of the human species versus protection of the nature because it has its own intrinsic value and is considered worthy of protection. So possibly a non anthropocentric approach as well as an anthropocentric approach could lead to the same output here. Um, in evaluating these different approaches, uh, it again comes down to the ethical approach. For example, in Mill's uh, utilitarism, like we heard in the last classes, the moral quality of an action is determined by its consequences. Um, while in the deontological ethics and deontology, um, it's more about the intention, not about the consequences. So we have to uh, discuss this further. But from the point of view of uh, society as a whole, I think it would certainly be advantageous for the treatment of nature and animals to ascribe an intrinsic value, uh, intrinsic value to non-human things as well, and to make their value dependent, not only on the benefit for humans. And with this understanding of the world, I think sustainable management by companies would be a standard and no longer merely optional. So that was it for my, uh, um, for my small presentation.